This conference will now be recorded. Right, let's start today's session. In the last session, we were discussed about file handling. In that file handling, we have seen how to check whether file is exist or not. And also, if the file is exist, then how to find a number of lines, number of words, number of characters in that file we discuss. And in today's session, we'll see zip and unzip operations using files. Zip means uh, we can take all the files, text files, and store into one folder that is called zip folder. Zip folder is also called as rar folder. So ZIP, zip and unzip operations, I'm going to do this. Zip and unzip. Zip means we can store all multiple text files into one folder that is called zip folder or rar folder. Unzip means we can extract we can extract files from zip folder that is called unzip okay so generally zip stands for what journal implement plan zip stands for there are some compression files like journal implement plan zip stands for journal improvement plan we can say that journal implement plan so rar stands for rochelle archive Rochelle is the man who invented RAR file. RAR starts for Rochelle Archive. Rochelle is the man who invented RAR file. Next, there is one more file is their TAR file. In real time, the programmers will use TAR file to send the important files or uh, highly confidential files to on-site location. That is TAR file that is called tapered archive actually, tapered archive. Table archive. This is more security, more protected. So type of archive to extract the files, compulsory password is required, or some other credentials are required. So we are talking about we are talking about uh, chip only, that is journal implement plan. Means here we have a lot of text files are there like abc.txt, abcd.txt, xyz.txt, okay, durga.txt, tribular.txt. These are all text files I want to store into one folder that is called zip or rar folder. How to do it uh, using Python program, how to do it zip and unzip operations, we'll look into that. But to work with the zip files, we use a module called zip file module. Okay, so that we have to import what? zip file module is required zip file module is there it's a built-in module only and if I, after importing zip file here file object is f equals to capital zip capital f this is the zip file class okay zip file class so f equals to zip file class and here we have to use file name dot zip extension is required file name dot zip and here uh, we are going to store all text file into zip folder that's what we have to use mode is w mode only w mode in the sense right right mode all the text files we are writing to the zip file that is called file name dot zip extension and there is one more constant is there here that constant always in python zip underscore deflated deflated we can say that zip underscore deflated zip underscore deflated this is what it's a constant this indicates that we are going to write the all files into zip file only zip folder only zip underscore deflated link zip underscore deflated so this constant is optional not compulsory okay this is zip file creation 
in DAX. But same thing if you want to do unzip. Unzip means we can extract the files from zip folder. How we upload text files to the zip folder. Same, we can also extract the files from zip folder. How to do it? Unzip, we can see it. So F is a file object equals to ZIP zip file of file name dot ZIP extension comma mode is what actual read mode and zip underscore stored we can say that zip stored in the sense we are going to extract the files from zip folder that is zip stored these two constants are optional to use if you don't use this constants also this will work and make sure that the small letter all small letters zip file is there no this is called module name and here it is capital letter is there no z capital f capital this is what actually class name module name class name both are there here difference this is difference this is different first we look into how to do zip operations with all files we'll look into that first example so I'm taking file 11 is my program name. In this, I'm writing all the files into zip folder. First of all, I have to import what actually zip file module. This is a built-in module. And after that here, file object is F equals to, okay, what uh, uh, class we have to use? ZIP capital F-I-L-E file. Then why it is not coming ZIP capital Z and capital F file here class is not coming because this zip file class is present in which module zip file module if you want to consume anything from zip file module you have to use module name dot class name like that only look like module name is what small letter zip file dot class name is capital letter zip file a file name any file name you can take Okay, so just I'm taking files dot ZIP extension. And which mode you have to use? Write mode. And which is required? Zip deflated. Even zip deflated also will not come here. Why? Because that is present in which module? Zip module, zip file module. So zip file is a module name dot zip deflated. I have to say that. But every time importing uh, accessing this uh, uh, properties and classes using zip file module is not required for example every time we are using <coughs> every time we are using zip file dot zip file zip file dot zip deflated like this okay instead of this we can do what simply from zip file import star now at this time we need not to use module name directly you can use class name here also we need not to use zip file directly you can use zip, zip deflated like this this will work fine okay this is the very simple syntax so you know from zip file import star in the sense from zip file small letter zip file uh, module we are importing uh, by default this class and uh, file name start jip folder and w is a write mode and zip deflated is a constant once we create a zip files file start jip we can start writing the files into this zip folder so how to write simple write method only can use so any number of files what files are there you can upload not required to all files need to be uploaded in the zip folder you can use any number of files like abcd.txt abcd.txt next f dot write now coming to this uh durgadurga.txt f dot write Next here you can see any files like sample.txt, like sample.txt. So after uploading the file, then I can say that simply f dot close only. Closing the file after, then I'm just printing the confirmation. So files dot zip file created successfully. Okay, or else directly we can write zip file created successfully like this zip file created successfully so once i run this now you can see zip file created successfully or not let me check this 
so it is saying that zip file created successfully once zip file is created successfully you can see this where it is there the file name is files.jdip in the left hand side panel so you'll be able to see this zip file files.jdip folder this is the rare folder icon here clearly available even more if you want to see properly this is rare folder or not so go to the physical location of your project your project is located in which drive no d drive python project at 7 am there we have to locate <laughs> let's go to <coughs> d drive now you can see d drive is there and python project at 7 am where it is there this is your project name double click on it and here you can check out rare folder files dot winrar zip archive is there now you can see this is winrar <coughs> windows rare folder zip archive it is so let me copy this folder first okay now i am going to show you right now manually extraction i'm doing manual extraction means whether the files are loaded into this rare folder or not i want to do manual extraction how to do extraction here just right click on the zip folder and you can extract here only just once we extract here all the files whatever we have uploaded abc abcd durga sample all files are coming out yes data also is there clearly so here also data is every file is having data what data is there along with the data and it's going to be stored into zip folder clearly so zip folder is also created abc.txt also here available okay so this is abc abcd.txt durga.txt like this now let's run this now coming to this okay so this is the zip folder is created i don't want to extract like this okay i want to extract through program only that is unzip operation also we have for unzip operation now you can see f equals to zip file files name dot jdip r mode we have to use because we are retrieving the files from zip folder so that's what r mode is compulsory required and zip stored is the uh, what we can say constant that is so zip stored indicates that that is we are trying to extract the files from zip folder only so now coming to the zip file is created successfully once we create a zip file successfully so we'll go for unzip operation purpose one more file so files file 12 file 12 that is similarly here from zip file import star now coming to this here uh, zip stored represent uh, unzip operation okay so if you want to extract the files from zip folder file name is file object is f zip file is a class name and in this class so you have to um, uh, use compulsory the built-in file what already we have file names dot jdip so files dot jdip we can say that this file name compulsory sir if you don't find the file if you don't give the file name properly then obviously it will give what error what error file not found error exception you will get so mention the proper file name from where you want to extract then you can see r mode i'm giving read mode means all the data i want to read from this file start jdip read mode and comma zip underscore stored means what it is zip stored is the Thing like uh, constant it is so next what i'm trying to do all whenever we uh, load whenever we upload the text files into zip folder all the files are present in by default a name list method there is a method called standard method name list method in that method files are available by default f dot name list method from this name list method i want to read and stored into a variable called names so by default all files whatever we uploaded like uh, abc.txt abcd.txt all the files are present in name list method in this name list method onwards we are going to get the all the file names and stored into names only stored into names names is a list only sir names is what actually list 
So names equals to f dot name list. Then here for name equals to for name for name in names for name in names. Then printer printer file name file name. So I have to print the file name clearly. So what is that file name? We'll look into this file name. What is the name of the file here? You can see file name is what just name I'm name. So in this names list, multiple names are there. One by one, I want to retrieve. For loop variable is what name in names. This is the collection of names. From this names, one by one, I am reading and name I am displaying. File name is okay. This is what just. Uh, uh, retrieving the all multiple names of the files from zip folder and i am trying to print each and every file name separately and if we want to display content of the file also yes i want to display content of the file every file so let's go for content of the file what is the data is available also that i want to display content of the file content of the file okay then content of the file i want to display to display content of the file, just F1 is my file object equals to open as a method. And that which file content is required? Current file. Current file name is what name? Name is a loop variable. So every time here, every time here in this names list, one by one name will come and stored into name variable. That name I'm going to display that name also i'm opening in which mode i have to open that is in read mode r mode f1 equals to open name comma r r means read mode only so after this here print print f1 dot read i'm taking f1 dot read means completely current file name file data i want to print so after that let me give some line gap file to file that's empty function i'm using so this is what extracting the files from zip folder after extract extracting one by one file from zip folder and i'm trying to print the name of the file separately and content of the file also separately f1 equals to open name comma read mode let's run this we are extracting clearly how many files i have uploaded previously abc.txt file name the content also available file name is abcd.txt content of the file is available and file name durga.txt content of the file is available file name sample.txt content of the file is available like this got my point so this is the case here so from zip file import star f is a file object equals to zip file is a class file star jdip r means read mode zip store Names equal step dot name list method. So this is zip and unzip operations. Unzip means we can extract the files from zip folder. Zip means we can store the files into zip folder like this. Okay. Next, I'm going to uh, uh, I'm going to use uh, what we can say uh, a CSV files concept. CSV in the sense comma separated values. That means we can store our data into Excel sheet. And also at the same time, we can read our data from Excel sheet and display into Python programming, Python PyCharm editor. So that is how to work with CSV data. CSV data means comma separated values. So comma separated values, how to work with comma separated values, we'll look into that. So first we'll, we'll go with the uh, first CSV writing and CSV reading. Here also in CSV file, writing and reading is possible writing means to store the data and reading means to retrieve the data that is csv extension all these things comma separated value csv stands for csv stands for comma separated value to work with csv file in python programming python provides a built-in module called csv module we have to import that module import csv like that and in this in this csv files also we can write the data and we can read the data both we can do that but only the thing is while working with csv files to write the data we use writer method we use what method writer method to read the data we use what method reader method so these two methods are different 
and also we have to create here writer object as well as write reader object only suppose object means just we are assigning a method writer method equals to one variable called w and r equals to here reader method i'm assigning to one variable so here w will act as an object what object writer object r will act as an object what object reader object so w is a writer object r is a reader object writer is a method reader is a method and generally normal text files we use what method write method and read method only here but in when it comes to csv file writer and reader we have to use it so let's do let's show that examples so how to store the data into csv file how to store the data into csv file and um, how to retrieve the data from csv file also we'll look into that so for that i'm preparing simply file 13 dot py so file 13 is my program name and dot py here i'm trying to show you first writing the data into csv file for that purpose i'm importing csv comma separated values it's a module name and here i'm using with statement already you know about with keyword with keyword is used to make all file operation statements group together and the main advantage of with block is once we exit from the with block then automatically file gets closed and you need not to close the file explicitly by using f.close method once we are under in the with block only so that's what i'm using with keyword here and open open with keyword open then after that emp dot emp dot csv i'm taking emp dot csv this is a uh, my file name and extension also i'm giving csv extension and we are writing the data into csv file that's what i'm using w mode and after that so here i'm giving comma new line attribute i'm giving new line attribute so why new line attribute is required in this case if don't give new line what will happen so generally uh if you don't give new line attribute here okay so csv file blank lines will be included between your data some blank lines means empty lines include in between your data so to prevent that uh, blank lines so we use new line attribute is required okay new line attribute is required that is what actually new line attribute if i if you, even you can try with without new line with new line what is the happening you can try with from your side no issues but i'm including new line attribute here because i need to maintain the proper lines without making any blank lines so with is a keyword open is a method emp.csv is my file name w is a write mode because i need to store the data into csv file and new line is an attribute as is a keyword f is file object name under this with block i have to show you how to write the data into csv file w is my writer object and csv is a module name dot writer is a method name where you want to write on f f means file object that's all and here i'm trying to do w dot write row means employee details i want to write so that's what i'm giving employee number sorry employee number okay employee name then imply salary, then imply address, imply address. W is a writer object. Write row is a method. In the list of format, imply number, imply name, imply sal, imply address. Then coming to the next line, I'm asking to the user how many number of uh, employee and um, how many number of implied details he wants to give like n equals to n equals to int of input of enter number of employees data so he can decide how many number of employees data he wants to enter so i'm trying to do enter number of employees enter number of employees enter number of employees per i in range of n for i in range of n so that many number of employees i want to accept 
So each time I'm going to store what actually employee number equals to input of enter employee number like this. Next employee name equals to input of enter employee name. These details all will store into CSV file that is an Excel sheet only. Employee salary equals to input of enter employee salary. Next to what employee address. Input of enter employee address. Like this. Next, what I'm trying to do after entering one by one values, it will store into its variables. No, employee number will store here. Employee name will store here. Employee salary here. Employee address will be here. Then we will write to this one only. So we have to use right row. Right row is a method. And this right row, these fields I'm entering ENO, E name, E cell, E address. This I want to write here. This one, this one, this one, this one. I'm going to write here. So w dot write row here. Okay. And after completion of with block, entire the ending the with block, I have to say that total employee data returned to the CSV file successfully, or else just employee data, employee data returned to the return to CSV file successfully. successfully like this okay it return employee data employee data return to csv file successfully okay import csv with the block open emp.csv w new line as f w is a writer object csv dot writer method w dot write row employee number employee name employee cell employee address N equals to int of input of enter number of employees for i in n for i in range of n employee number employee name employee address all we are taking input and we are trying to upload into this these inputs into that w right row into cmp.csv file let's hit that is now you can decide number of employee details and implying i'm deciding number of employees i want to give four employee number is 101 employee name is i employee salary is 5000 employee address is hyd okay employee number 102 employee name is Shashi. employee salary is 4500 employee address is hyd employee number 103 name and salary and address employee number 105 104 uh, uh, name employee salary address like this so four employee details are successfully written to csv file do you want to check where it is created emp.csv file so look at this left hand side there is a emp.csv file is there this csv stands for comma separated values Whenever you double click on it, then all files are present in here, comma separated values through. But here actually the format will not be available in this uh, pie chart meter. If you want to see the real format of uh, uh, this, uh, what we can say, CSV file, then what we need to do, you have to go to physical location where your file is stored in D drive Python project at 7 a.m. In that we can find this Excel CD mp.csv file. So let's flip to your D drive. So D drive this is, and next uh, your project name is Python project at 7 a.m. Double click on it, and you can see emp.csv file is there, Excel sheet clearly. So when I place mouse pointer over there, Microsoft Excel comma separated value file is there here, comma separated values file. Then we double click on it, and we'll be able to find this completely data in Excel sheet. Now you can say employee number, employee name, employee salary, employee address. It's available in Excel sheet. Yes, please. 
So this data is writing into this CSV file, Excel file. But same data we can able to retrieve from that Excel file also. How we can retrieve that uh, same data from Excel file? That is how to retrieve the uh, data from employee.csv file. This is writing by using writer method, okay, writer object. And number of employees we are writing and each employee details I'm including separately and that employee details I'm going to write into this uh, CSV file. Next, we'll go for reading same data from the Excel sheet like reading CSV data. For that, I'm taking file 14.py and in this, again, I have to go for import CSV, comma separated value extension. Uh, module is required, importing module. Now in this, for reading data from the CSV file compulsory, your file name correctly you have to mention. If you don't mention the file name obviously, then you will get file not found error. So every time reading process, file name is compulsory required. If you don't mention the file name, then it will give error. So here I'm using file objective equals to open is a method. Open is a method, then emp.csv is my file name. Dot R means read mode only. So read mode. So read mode it is. So R is a read mode emp.csv my existing file open is a method f is a file object so reader object have to create here r equals to it's a reader object csv dot csv dot what method you have to use reader method you have to use and from where i have to read f f means file object so now coming to this if i try to print r here <coughs> while reading the data from emp.csv file Reader object will read the data from file emp.csv and we are going to store R value. We are printing R value. Once I print this R value, you can see this. So, what is this reader object? It is csv dot reader object at 0 into 0, 0, 0, 0. This is only object. It is reader object. Sorry, actually. Yeah. But in this object, there is an object is there, but this object is having a lot of reference data. That data I want extracted. So how to extract it? I don't want to print R. So just observe here. I want to convert that R into list format, list of R. So that means we are going to print that all the records into list format. That list I want to store into data. So data equals to list of R in the sense what? R is a reader object. This object contains so much of uh, uh, records reference that all I'm converting into list. The list data will be stored into print data. So this is data format, list format only. So when I print this data, so all the records are coming from CSV file and it will be converted into list, total list format we are displaying. Each and every record also will be considered as list. This is one list. This is second list. This is third list. How many records are there? Each record will be considered as one list and all records again under other list also there. This is nested list is printing now. But my requirement is, I want to extract this list from this outer list and also each list I want to each list of values I want to get this how to get this each list of values okay let's look into that each list of values how to get so we are printing list now so later I can remove this list also just I want to arrange the table format how to do it simple for loop how to use for line line means what one line loop variable it is in where I have to retrieve data. Data is what actually list format. So for line in data, if I try to print line means loop variable, <laughs> this is one line. We're extracting this line from this data and printing this. And this is another line. We're extracting this and printing this. This is another line. We're extracting, printing separately. But even then, that also I don't need because each and every line is again list format only. You can see this. This is complete list data from this each and line each and every line I'm separating them. But this lines also in word format. Obviously list format only. This line also is list format clearly. You can see. This is list. This is list. This is list. This is list. Everything is list format only here. But I don't need list format from that list also. I want extra uh, extract some data here. How to extract some data here. OK, again, I'm using here one more loop nested loop for word in line for line in data 
and after that in that line each and every word i want to extract for word in line in that line then finally i want to print what actually word only if i try to print a word look at here how we can extract that each and every words from the line and how it will print now you can see this line is extracting first in that line we are extracting word in line word means enmo one word e name one word e salary e address these are all one words are available but each and every word is going to be uh, split into next line next line next line but i want to arrange them into same line only how i can arrange them into same line simple here word after an end equal to some attribute i'm using end equals to attribute means and each and every word will display in the same line only but look at here i'm giving some space also and now coming to this same line it is displaying or not it's okay same line for perfect envo e name e salary e address is one line after that next record i have to display into next line to display that into next line what i can do after in flip after completion of inner for loop so empty function i'm using after completion of inner for loop empty function when we use them immediately it will arrange them into new line only so look at here 101 so i address like this but now here i want to give some tab space in between uh, word to word so i'm giving tab space slash t t means tab then end equals to there is no space now it will arrange very well structured in table format so now it is arranging this time this data is not required i don't want to print that is actually completely list format from that list i am collecting the data and extracting and arranging properly with all for line in data means each and every line separately and in that line i am printing word in line word means this one word and every word to word i am giving one tab space slash t is the escape sequence of tab space and after completion of inner loop inner loop means this word this word this word this word printing next i have to go to next line that's what inner loop after print empty line i'm using immediately it will jump into next line again next line words will be printed 101 sai this is only so we are extracting csv data and we are printing them into clearly which format table format again so this is comma separated values through we are reading the data from csv and we are writing the data into csv and we are making zip folder and zip folder all these things today what i want to discuss so in tomorrow we'll discuss a new concept that is uh, working with binary files so far we discussed completely text files zip files and uh, csv files then binary data how to store we'll discuss in next session that is in tomorrow that concept is called uh, pickling and unpickling concept we can say that the concept name is pickle and unpickle pickle the objects unpickle the objects in python there is a separate concept for pickling binary data unpickling binary data that we will continue in tomorrow's session clearly